Hello once again, ladies and gentlemen. Can we talk about Gem and the Holograms? Hello. Here we are again. The Can We Talk About podcast. Kristen, we are can we talking this week about something a bit more presidential, a bit more... Oh, how appropriate for the times. A bit, a, a bit free, a bit more freedom mm. Me Feels good. It's, it's, it's still that Neon Nightmare, that pastel phantasm, that oh-so-frighteningly fashionable 80s cartoon air quotes classic gem and the holograms, of course, but it's the kind of episode that makes me proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. It's, you know, it's gonna come crashing down, and it's gonna hurt inside sometimes, but, but deep down, I know I got the red, white, and blue running through my veins. There's probably another Hulk Hogan theme I'm forgetting here. My name is Joe. I'm Mr. Tech Rat. I'm Kristen. And we are watching Gem and the Holograms via Shot Factory's Gem and the Holograms truly outrageous complete series box set ah! and the wonderful the wonderful Real world choked it out there. Netflix, Kristen, what do we what, uh, what do we got with Netflix? Well, I'm um, continuing the rule of three since I did in fact mention the three percent in the past two episodes. Three percent. I'm not watching it still or anything. I already did that, as I mentioned. I'm not doing much else on Netflix currently. Still doing Star Trek. That's what I. Got I keep going. popping in and watching um some episodes from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, because I follow the Always Sunny script Twitter. So occasionally I'm <laughs> like, oh, that was really funny. I should watch that episode. It's a wonderful Twitter follow, and Always Sunny is a wonderful show. It is. But back to Jem, Kristen. This week, despite being more presidential, it's also causing. A bit of a dilemma, (laughs) because you see, this week, we're talking about Journey to Shangri-La. Oh no, excuse me, we're talking about the presidential dilemma, of course. (laughs) Which is an episode uh, that sucks. I want to say it's been a while since we've had a sucker this big, but Music is Magic wasn't that long ago. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to go to Aztec Enchantment, but yes, Music is Magic is pretty. Music is Magic suffers from the same sort of problems that this episode does, Mm -hmm. kind of. (laughs) Bad animation, among other things. I just remembered when you said Aztec Enchantment, by the way. I was perusing the gem bible in my smoking jacket uh, beside my fireplace, as I am wont to do. And one of the things I noticed is specifically in the notes for Rhea, Christy Marks was like, It should be noted that Rhea was born in the United States and therefore should not have a strong accent. <laughs> and I was reading that and going, hmm, someone fucked up. Misty Stewart Taggart. Come on. It's like she heard Rhea's voice actress and went, no, 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 no. More Mexican. Bring the pinata for the kids. Can you, will you be more Mexican if you hold this pinata while you're voice acting? Oh, God. Yeah, this one, the animation's bad. Songs are terrible. The plot, I noted, it seems like somebody, like, was carrying around a script from the 1966 Batman show and, like, dropped it into a box that said gem and was just like, oh, fuck, I can't get it out. Yeah, this basically doesn't belong in this cartoon. It's a horrendous ride, but sometimes that makes for the best podcast episode, so... Let's cross our fingers. Let's go! Me and my friends. We start off, this episode was written by Beth Bornstein, still most famous for the fan, most infamous for both Adventure in China and Hot Time in Hawaii, which, all things considered, Beth Bornstein is batting fucking 250 right here, with the fan being her only good episode, basically. Yeah, it's, she, we have a complicated relationship with Beth Bornstein, don't we? She's what I would call a mixed bag sort of writer. I like Hot Time in Hawaii for stupid reasons, of course. It had redeeming qualities. For instance, it looked okay. It looked okay, too. Adventure in China looked okay, but it was terrible. Adventure in China was hilarious. This fails on all three of those strengths that the other three have. Everything is bad. Everything is bad. It's like a primarily a Jerrica episode. Like, what? We start at Starlight Mansion. It is night. The doorbell rings, and Kimber goes to answer it to find fucking Mr. Doe and Mr. Cardholder here. They're from the federal government, and they're looking for someone named Jim? Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, that's that's an eh, Jim. Excuse me. Ah, uh, interesting. And Kimber introduces herself as Kimber Rodriguez. <laughs> Good, back to that joke. <laughs> Jerrica skulks a little closer to the door as Kimber is just like, Oh, Jem's busy. And What kind of feds visit a mansion in Beverly Hills or fucking wherever 
in the middle of the night. <laughs> they were sent right from the president's dinner table at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They were like, you know what? I need me a gem. <laughs> Hang on, boys. I have a mission for you. <laughs> Make it as at short notice as possible. The men have a telegram for gem. President's orders. And upon hearing this, Jericho goes, all right, Synergy, and grabs her earrings with both hands here. Well, she's really got to squeeze this one out. <laughs> Which is not how, neither of these things that she does is how she transforms into a gem, and yet she transforms into a gem. Yeah, and she does uh, the double fist earring in a, a couple of times in this episode. Mostly when trying to fire holograms at people. When going woo 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 woo. Jem basically pushes Kimber aside and is just like, oh, I'm Jim. <laughs> What's going on with the president shit I heard here? the president needs me. So they hand over the telegram. Jem opens it up, and it's an invitation from the president to perform for himself and the first lady, which. Is that necessary? I mean, is that technically an invitation? If it's just, they're not going to a party. It's, I want you to perform for me. Is this a command performance? Does the first lady look like Jem? Is this the <laughs> princess and the singer? All the holograms are incredibly excited, and it's here that I noted everyone's really off model. It's going to be one of those episodes. It's like the storyboard people forgot what bodies look like. The president says if they can be there in two days, their entertainment coordinator will take care of everything. So they will be performing at fucking sure the Kennedy Center, Washington's famous Kennedy Center. And Jem's like the Kennedy Center. <laughs> the first thing that yes, Jem walks in going the Kennedy Center. Wow! Like okay, thanks for the exposition, lady. That thing. Paul Davis is here, entertainment coordinator, and he meets with Jem. He shows her around the concert hall a bit, and Jem is just like, "What are these fucking laser dishes that are being worked on here?" Uh, and apparently they are quote unquote security measures for the president. And he says, and I'm afraid I can't give you any more information than that. What the fuck? <laughs> that sounds like something a liar would say. The president really wanted laserium and he got gem. So he's just like, can we just put laserium stuff with gem? Am I supposed to get that reference? You don't know about laserium, Kristen? I don't know what the, the fuck, fuck that is? Featuring the music of Pink Floyd. Fucking, it's the thing where people go to observatories and it does the fucking laser shit on the ceiling. Well, you should have just said it that way first. <laughs> now I comprehend completely. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he goes, I'm afraid I can't give you much more information. And Jem's just kind of like, yeah, whatever. So she's left to wander the stage. She goes to grope the curtains for a little <laughs> bit. I think that's what she's doing. And as soon as the laser turrets are turned on, apparently they give off some kind of fucking radio wave, radiation, radiology department stuff that fucks Taking with Synergy's- Taking x-rays of all of Jerrica's bones. <laughs> that fucks with Synergy's holograms, so she ends up turning into Jerrica. And as she is hanging out, like, oops, I'm in a high security place as someone I'm not supposed to be. She just kind of, like, wraps herself in the curtains <laughs> and- <laughs> I want to call him Paul Dini. <laughs> Damn it, Paul Dini. You had your hand in this episode, too? He's like, ah, it's magic. Anyway, who the fuck are you? Paul is coming back looking for Jem at this point, actually, because he wants to show her the lighting facilities. And I wrote that Rio is going to be so jealous he doesn't get to see the Kennedy Center's famous lighting facilities. I want the... Oh, no. I forgot the word. Lazarium? No, not Lazarium. Though Rio would be, like, a real, like... Real horny for a laserium. <laughs> um, Rio wants to rub his uh, grubby little hands all over them satellite dishes. You know it. <laughs> Jerrica tries contacting Synergy at this point, and here's where Paul confronts Jerrica, and he's like, uh, where's Jim? And Jerrica quickly introduces her. She tries, to, like, playing this off, basically, uh, when being asked where Jim is by just kind of going, I was here the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I was here the whole time, and I'm backstage because I'm uh, trying to get a new perspective. You probably just didn't see me because I was standing behind famous rock star Jim. <laughs> standing directly behind her, mirroring her movements. <laughs> you might say we're almost, like, the same person, practically. That's probably why you didn't notice. And Jerrica says, Jem had to run. Cool, good. He is pissed off. Paul Dini is just kind of just like, well, I'll let it slide for now, but this is not how you conduct business in Washington, which is true. Don't you pull that rock star shit on me again. I'll magic you to death. Fuck you. Jerrica, we see next, she is giving a call to Kimber, who apparently the rest of the holograms just stayed behind at Starlight Music because we need the plot to go like that. Yeah, whatever. Again, people having Jem just kind of do her own business shit. <laughs> like, in a normal situation, Jericho would have been the person to go hang out at the Kennedy Center. So she lets Kimber know Synergy Signal can't penetrate the Kennedy Center, so what they need to do, Kristen, is take Synergy apart 
and bring her to Washington, D.C. That'll make the signal stronger. Chris, it, it, I'm sorry, does this not make any fucking sense, Joe? Is, is Jerrica fucking stupid? Let's transport Synergy instead of leaving her in a place where she's safe. I mean, after all, there are no stakes here besides us getting to cozy up with the president. Synergy's fucking holograms got them... In, Beth Borstein Road Adventure in China. The holograms could go to China. And they can't go to... Oh, oh, the fucking laser defense system. Sorry, you can't fucking... I'm cranking the Pink Floyd, so the holograms are wavering. We just need to move Synergy closer. The proximity is how the holograms work. Kimber is wearing a palm tree pattern dress with a palm tree on her belt, I noted. (laughs) Okay, Hawaii Kimber. We fade to the misfits. They are watching a newscast with someone who is clearly voiced by Shayna telling a news story about the Washington Marauder famed thief. Jenna doesn't give a shit, so she's like, change the channel. She doesn't want to hear about stolen goods, yeah, so they change to Lindsay's show, and of course Lindsay is talking about Jim. Of course, when does Lindsay do anything else? Pizazz makes them stop channel surfing because she's like, wait a minute, Jim's on the Lindsay Pierce show, as if she's not, as if she's not fucking always on the Lindsay Pierce show. So Lindsay talks about how Jim's gonna do a thing with the president, and like two seconds later, Pizazz is like, oh, shut it off! So it's time for everybody to go to Eric. Let's go. Let's see what Eric can do. We fade to Misfits music. Chop, chop, Eric time. I do want to point out before they leave, Roxy is wearing a very weird Fresh Prince era Will Smith (laughs) jumper. That was very confusing. I mean, she is from Philadelphia, so I guess she's just emulating her idol. This is way before Fresh Prince. Born and raised on the playgrounds where she spent most of her days. That was the 90s, right? Ah, late 80s, maybe. I don't know. Oh, maybe I'm not that far off then. (laughs) The reference still works. We fade to Misfits music at this point. Eric just kind of shrugs his shoulders because what the, what the fuck is Eric going to... Who is Eric going to bribe to get the Misfits with the president? There is no one in existence. <laughs> Certainly not a corrupt senator somewhere. Oh, definitely not. Stormer is wearing both vertical and horizontal stripes and... Good. Here is where I noted, yes, Roxy has her pants halfway up to her stomach as well. This is a different outfit. They changed outfits between scenes, which is crazy. The Misfits vow to do things their way, which is the stupid way. Jesus! (laughs) The incredibly stupid way. Nobody thought this was a bad idea. Not even Star Wars, just like, yeah, let's do this. Because we cut to Congress. It is Congress. The Speaker of Congress, or the House, or wherever the fuck, I just said Congress. I don't know where the fuck they are. (laughs) It looks like Congress. Surprise, I don't know much about our government. Here we go. <laughs> no, no, no Americans do. Let's, you know, let's be honest. A session is just about to end, and the Misfits plan, you know, to get, to cozy up with the Maybe president. they are looking, they're looking for a corrupt congressman. <laughs> They crash the meeting in Congress because just as it's about to be, this session is about to end, Pizzazz cuts off the speaker here and goes, this session is ready to rock! So, Pizzazz's plan had to have been improvised, right? (laughs) Because I don't think Pizzazz also understands how the government works. They got to Washington, D.C., and Stormer was like, what's the plan? And Pizzazz points at one building, points at a building, and, it's, and it happens. It could have been the fucking Lincoln Memorial, but they got lucky and it was Congress. And Pizzazz is just like, there, some important dude probably is there. And they happen to run into a lot of important people. Pizzazz takes stock of her surroundings, seems to understand that voting takes place here. <laughs> and goes, there's one more issue to vote on here, guys. Since Jem is going to perform for the Prez, we feel like the Misfits should have an equal opportunity. They want to have a concert, too. And in case Congress isn't familiar with this 80s new wave girl group band punk with a saxophone, they have a song prepared. Someone should deport Jetta while they're there. Song number one of the- Jetta doesn't have a green card, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just toss her out while we're here. Star Spangled Fantasy, Kristen, I severely dislike this song. This song is some bullshit. The Misfits all do- 99% of this music video is the Misfits doing what I called a weird train dance where their hands are on each other's shoulders. Yep. Mm-hmm. Explain it to me. Pizzazz and the person in third, because I wasn't taking... Pizzazz is obviously out front. So it's, people are throwing their heads back and down in like reverse, like one, three, two, four kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're just... It looks just, terrible. It looks stupid and terrible. And they show it four times. Twice in blue neon silhouette. Uh Uh-huh. It's uh, the best animated thing in this episode, so I guess that's why they use- This is where their budget went. (laughs) We got fireworks and America imagery, as well as the worst line ever. Music bursting in the air. Fireworks, fireworks everywhere! 
see, this is when you take note that we mentioned that all of the songs in this episode are terrible. And like you and I, we're always pretty comfortably biased towards misfit songs. So imagine how much of a fucking shit show this has to be. You're, I think you're much more inclined towards Misfits songs than I am. I, I give them a lot. I give them more shit than, than you do, I'm sure. But yes, hearing you There's no being... excuse for this. <laughs> is this, so far, the worst song in Gem, Kristen? Hmm. I would need some time to ruminate on that. Because what, what did you have? As, well, you had set yourselves as, as your worst song last season, and you had that said... That was mostly a joke. Right, and you had said that you've come around on set yourselves. I think probably the one that you've definitely complained about the most was on Coming From Behind, I think. <laughs> and that song definitely isn't bad, as bad as this one. That one I hated in spirit, whereas this one is just a technical failure on all accounts. So this song, you know, it's about America, but somehow Pizzazz turns this song about America into a song about herself, which actually isn't really that surprising, I guess. Pizzazz is my star-spangled fantasy, whatever the fuck that means. Welcome to the United States of Pizzazzica. Yes! (laughs) I'd live there. There's a Pizzazz motorcade with Roxy dressed as a chauffeur, which means now half of the Misfits and Jem have been dressed as chauffeurs. That outfit's probably starting to smell weird. (laughs) Is it the same blue chauffeur outfit all the time? I assume so. (laughs) They just pass it around. They just look around like, we have the assets for a blue chauffeur uniform. Let's just use it on fire. Who cares? Roxy, Stormer. Copying and pasting it on top of different people. (laughs) We have Pizzazz dressed as George Washington and she falls into the Potomac. We've got Pizzazz and Stormer get really close. Like (laughs) Pizzazz looks like she's going in for the kiss. Because as as Stormer's rocking out on her, her guitar, which... Uh, again, all this looks weird and terrible. Uh, it ends with basically Roxy Stormer and Jetta are all doing a, a weird human pyramid thing kind of thing, holding out sparklers on top of the Washington Monument. Yep, they climbed up there. There's some scaling issues. And there are some fireworks that all say misfats. Misfats, misfats. We cut back to reality. <laughs> It's basically a Gilligan cut because the misfits are all just, like, getting kicked out. There's a bunch of security <laughs> security congressmen show up and start... <laughs> Ah, the next natural step up from security chefs. <laughs> and start tussling with the misfits to get them out as they're, they're just kind of like, well, what do you think? Is it a yes or is it a no? And all of them are just like, boo, no. no we voted and no. <laughs> we decree no, gavel, gavel. Oh yeah, there is some gavel percussion that we neglected to mention. <laughs> yeah, in this song, which fuck. Ah! <laughs> well, at least that's over. We, we ripped that bandaid off. Maybe don't bring a song that sucks next time, Misfits. I think we're past the worst part of the episode. (laughs) They should have played Universal Appeal. They should have. Then they would have gotten a lot of yeses! We cut to a hotel. The holograms are just about finished setting up Synergy. This happens so fucking quickly. The Misfits really think on their feet in this episode. They're like, well, shit, that didn't work. Okay. (laughs) New plan. (laughs) Where are the maid outfits? Nope, not the fucking chauffeur outfit. Where are the maid outfits? There's four of them? That's weird. We only just recently got four members. (laughs) The last one was for Tech Rat. Yeah. And Jen's like, I don't want to wear that one. It smells weird. (laughs) Man, doing all these accents is really making me miss the Countess. (laughs) (laughs) Man. Should I just start doing my Countess voice whenever I do Jetta? (laughs) Sure, why not? (laughs) All right, we'll see. I don't know if she even says anything else in this episode. We'll see how this goes. Rhea nearly drops a piece of synergy as she's walking in. Hey, and another thing about this episode of The Music is Magic, somebody fucking turned Rhea's slider down again to where she's fucking pale-ass white. Oh, good. Fucking animators get your shit together. Jesus Christ. (laughs) What is the point of diversity if you're just gonna not bother? So Rhea nearly drops a piece of synergy as she's walking in, and Jerrica makes sure to say, without this equipment, there won't be a concert. And here's where we slowly zoom in. The misfits are all eavesdropping, dressed as maids. Somehow they found out where Jem's hotel is. Somehow they got the maid uniforms. So, doesn't matter. They all, they just, they... They're expert sleuths. And they all overheard what Jerrica said. Basically, and they head back to their own room where apparently, uh, here's, oh, here's a line from Jetta, Kristen, where she says that they can spy on the holograms from their window. Jetta has the bright idea to be like, oh, if we go to the window on the other side of the hotel, we will be able to see. (laughs) How that felt good. How the Countess get on the Misfits, wow. Oh my god. So Jetta is actually the Countess, that's why she disappeared. And it turns out the Countess is poor and British instead of French and rich. (laughs) That is a twist. So, I have here that, yes, the misfits can spy on the holograms unless they close the curtains. I mean, they're gonna close the curtains, aren't they? I mean, they have their supercomputer facing the window. (laughs) Fuck you! 
They're trying to put Synergy back together, and apparently they forgot to bring the fucking instructions or something because they're having a little you trouble. You would be better at this by now. To be fair, they put Synergy in Starlight Mansion a year ago, probably, in canon. They don't occasionally, like, take her apart to exercise her stupid keyboard pieces. Stretch her out, get her physical. Roxy and Jetta are watching through binoculars very intently through the window because of course the curtains are open and Pizzazz is on the phone with Eric. Now I mentioned, I said, hey Eric, remember that big computer Malone busted up? And I did not expect them to call back to that shit. As it happens, yeah, uh, they basically call back to it in all but mentioning Malone. It's just private investigator is all they said. Eric knows exactly what they are talking about and he appears to have pictures on his desk like holy shit where's he been keeping them malone got pictures of synergy i'm pretty sure he did yeah i shocked eric kept them (laughs) well he thought that it was fucking busted (sighs) his mind is a complex thing the mind of a businessman kimber sits down while everyone else is working typical kimber and she hears about the washington marauder as well from newscaster shana so Mm -hmm. here we find the, the washington marauder he made a videotape to play on national television, which they play on national television. Why? Why would the news give this fucking bozo publicity? This reminds me of a much softer version of the first episode of Black Mirror, where <laughs> a non-existent princess in London is captured, and um, she is reading, like, the ransom for her, and the request of the kidnapper is that the prime minister is filmed on TV having sex with a pig. Yeah, I actually watched that episode, so... Mm-hmm. I watched, I think, like, before everybody... Before I, everybody thought Black Moon Before was so it blew cool. up. <laughs> I watched, I think, like, the first two episodes of it, and I was like, ah, I think I'm done. It was fine. Oh, but anyway, uh, they kept playing the hostage video in that episode. That was the point I was trying to make, is them just being like, hey, here's this woman under, like, severe stress, like, a traumatizing amount of stress, crying. Let's keep playing it. <laughs> I guess that's the message of the episode. So... The Washington Marauder, he's dressed like a highwayman. What a fucking douche. What a goddamn idiot he is. And he plans on stealing the nation's most prized treasure. It will be the final piece of my collection. (laughs) I think this episode would have been a lot more entertaining if I kind of had the capacity to reimagine the whole thing, except the Washington Marauder, I forgot his goddamn name, (laughs) uh, was actually, like, just an animated Nick Cage and voiced by Nick Cage. (laughs) National treasure. Kimber walks away because her attention span can't comprehend fucking Batman villains, and she's just like, this is too weird. She's like, whatever, Calendar Man's seen it. (laughs) The phone rings, someone calling themselves Lincoln Abbey, who we don't, I'm assuming this is Eric, because we don't find out, and Charlie Adler, Kristen, Pulls his fucking weight in this episode because he voices every male character that's not the president, basically. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't, when Kimber answered the phone, and he wasn't just like, Hey, this is Charlie Adler. <laughs> you may have heard of me. I'm everyone. I mean, fucking Rio isn't even in this episode. What's he doing? I'm surprised he's not also a member of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> After all the shit he's been up to in his copious amounts of free time he apparently has. I'm just angry at everyone because of this episode. Just setting up the lights at Congress, why not? Shining a light on corruption. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln Abbey here, he is from the White House Affairs Bureau, and he says that the president is inviting Jem and company out to dinner at the White House, 7.30 sharp. The holograms are all excited to hear this news. They don't ask for verification or anything. But they just need synergy to get online. All it needs is this last microchip. Which is the size of a CD. (laughs) The 80s. Yeah, technology. She doesn't seem to be working, but the holograms are all fucking computer illiterate and they don't realize you gotta fucking give it a second to boot up, Jesus. Synergy starts making the dial-up noise, of course. (laughs) And she explains that this is her circuits warming up. It's very technical stuff. They wouldn't be able to understand anyway, so Synergy is probably just like, I'm like an oven, Jerrica. I need to preheat. And Jerrick is just like, oh, can I put a turkey in you? That sounds really helpful, Synergy. And of course, Synergy rolls her computer eyes that she doesn't actually have. <laughs> a turkey to computer? Pff, the 80s. You're on cocaine, Jerrica. So the holograms are all given fun new clothing after Jerrica is turned into Gem as well. And I really hope they close the goddamn curtains because the misfits could have been watching, but they weren't. I think um, no matter what, you could have assumed that after all of, of the spying that the misfits had been doing, they probably lost interest by that point anyway. <laughs> So the holograms are now at the gates of the White House. They're speaking with Charlie Adler Guard about the president 
not expecting them. <gasps> they were duped. I guess somebody played a joke on you and he had my voice. Isn't that weird? Hmm. Very funny. White House guards are just kind of like, mm, sorry, but it's not going to happen. The president's in another meeting right now. And everyone just kind of goes, well, that sucks and walks away and they start to uh, derive away. They part amicably. It's just a, it's a weird thing where it's just like, oh, well, snap. Let's just go back to the hotel. Bye, guys. And then, and, uh, hey, yeah. bye. Let's go through a Wendy's drive through I guess. So we cut to the president's war room where they're all analyzing this video of the Washington Marauder. You know, pres- important things the president should be involved in. <laughs> and the president is just like, hmm, what are we going to do? Charlie Adler, what are your thoughts? Well, not Charlie Adler. Let me explain it to you. I don't know. We're bad at investigating, it turns out. Charlie Adler, pre- how, many, how many Charlie Adlers does the president have on his staff? All of them? It's like the Charlie Adler version of all the assholes from Spaceballs. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing I was thinking was just a ton of... Oh no, the guy from The Matrix. Oh, uh, Hugo Weaving is Agent Smith? Yes, Agent Smith. That's what I, I would thought Mr. Smith, and I'm like, that's definitely wrong. Because no, because he goes Mr. Anderson to Neo. Yes. My name is Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so I guess Rio is Trinity? <laughs> I don't want to think about this! <laughs> this is always where we go. So we fade to Synergy being walked in on by a shadowy figure, and we immediately cut back to everyone in the Rock and Roadster. Gem is driving for some reason, which again, if this episode couldn't get enough shit wrong. This is the worst. Uh, so they are all whining because, oh man, it's not enough that we have to, to play a concert for the president, but we didn't get to have dinner with him. <laughs> Who would play a prank on us like this? And Kimber suspects, hmm, I got, I got an idea. If there's four people and their initials starts with M. Well, uh, Mizaz, Moxie, Meta, Matormer, Emmerich Maimond. That sounds right. Oh, the Misfits, of course. Oh, the Misfits. See, this is one of those things where it sounds like it's implausible that Kimber would suspect the Misfits, but then you remember <laughs> that Lindsay is constantly stalking them, reporting every single fucking thing they do. So the Misfits probably heard about it. Somebody really should go, Kimber, they're across the goddamn country, and then someone- Or is it possible that the news report before the Washington Marauder one was, girl rock band gets kicked out of Congress? <laughs> <laughs> Why wasn't that on the news? Because <laughs> no one gives a shit, I guess. There's that little government going on that they were like, who cares? It was probably on C-SPAN and that's it. Synergy calls out to Jerrica because of the intruder, but Synergy can't just do the same thing that she did with Malone, I guess, and uh, make herself broken or fire lasers or anything because she just goes, oh no, ah, Jerrica, help, somebody's, oh no, there's an intruder, oh! If Synergy um, fucking knows that Gem and the Holograms are hanging out in the car... Just then, if she heard the door open, why can't she be like, hologram me, invisible self? That's, why doesn't Synergy have, like, fucking active cloaking or anything like that? I guess, hmm. See, now I'm trying to logic it out. It is implied when we see the stupid computer thing happening that the lights on Synergy's, like, monitor are what makes holograms. So I guess it makes sense that she can't point that shit at herself. I would love if the cartoon explained <laughs> this. <laughs> It doesn't matter. The intruder pulls the plug on Synergy, who powers down without so much as bothering to fucking try to defend herself. And that's the end of segment one, as all of the holograms... So I guess the most Synergy can do is project her own wall in front of her in Starlight Mansion. Maybe she should have tried that. I need to know what angle Synergy is in comparison to that wall. Segment two starts, the Rockin' Roadster arrives, and they all run inside. Synergy was stolen! So, okay, Kristen, Rhea runs to the window... And, well, for some reason, Ray is drawn with, like, fucking Pizzazz's facial structure for some reason. I don't know Ugh. why. Creepy. And, yeah, it looks weird. And she points out that there are men loading a truck with Synergy's parts, which... Right behind, <laughs> right in front of their car. Right in front of the Rockin' Roadster. They somehow missed... Uh, maybe they missed him on the freight elevator or something. I don't know. Yeah, they went up to where they were and did not pass them on their way down. Okay. They all run back outside and give chase. Shayna says that she didn't even think the Misfits would resort to outright thievery. Shayna, are you fucking serious? The Misfits are a lot of things, but they're not thieves. They stole Jerrica's earrings in one of the fucking other Beth Bornstein episodes! They are very clearly people who steal things! Kimber wonders if it's the Washington Marauder, but they follow this truck all the way to the Pentagon? <gasps> What would the Pentagon want with Synergy? What would the Pentagon want with Australia's national treasure, Olivia Newton-John, who is purple? <laughs> I thought you were turning into Solid Snake for a second there. What would the Pentagon want with Synergy? What would Otacon want with Synergy? 
My nuclear weapons. Metal Gear. <laughs> Apparently, this was due to someone putting in an anonymous tip that unauthorized equipment was smuggled into Washington by Gemma and the Holler, by this girl band with the pink hair woman. Which is not a lie. Ah, uh, is Synergy unauthorized? What, what constitute on, on the, it's the It's the government. It doesn't matter. They could say yeah, it's unauthorized. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The Pentagon guard here speaks without moving his lips. Good animation. See, now I'm sad that we've already made the Kung Pao tr- ventriloquist joke. Because <laughs> this would have been a prime time to do it again. And Synergy is going to have to be tested before it can be returned to them. And we're going to poke all our holes. Extensive exploratory work. If everything checks out, they can have Yuck. Sy- they can have Synergy back in a couple of weeks. Oh, but the concert with the president is tomorrow. <laughs> My prom is tomorrow. So, Kristen, <laughs> you called... <laughs> You you called Star Spangled Fantasy the worst part of the episode. Uh, I'm starting to think you were being facetious because... <laughs> what? We, <laughs> we have here uh, song number two. So, okay, so they all get back in the rock and roadster. Jerrica tries to contact Synergy because they need some distractions. And they're starting to take Synergy apart. So Synergy's like, Jerrica, talk fast. Song number two of the evening. Time is running out. So, okay, let's, before we get into the bullshit, Time is Running Out, not a great song, used nope. previously in In Stitches. I thought that's what this was from. I couldn't remember because I forcibly blocked that song out because it was so boring the first time, and that Italian stereotype offended me. The gondolier. <laughs> that damn gondolier. The song is being used in a similar context, but there's no footage of the holograms running. I said at the time, even though, uh, I mean, there's- <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> We have shit like chords being cut on Synergy as, okay, Kristen. So, no, okay, hey, so Beth Bornstein seems to have a problem with authority. (laughs) Because in Adventure in China, they steal things from a museum. (laughs) And then get mad when they're told, don't do that. (laughs) So in this episode, Beth Bornstein is like, how can I make them worse people? And she decides, Gem the Hologram should just break into the White House. How's that go, Beth Borenstein? They trespass on White House grounds here, which could get them shot. Not only that, but they run away from the guards at the first opportunity, and Jim starts fucking firing holograms at them! We need to keep Synergy secret. Fight, Eagles, fight! Jim is attacking people with holograms during this song. And, and these we- guards, this <laughs> entire time, are using fucking kid gloves with them. I'm not one to criticize a cartoon advise murder but <laughs> so you're saying Jim the holograms deserve to get fucking get shoot them, them! <laughs> you were right this is the worst part of the episode <laughs> <laughs> we have images of synergy struggling throughout which look weird and doesn't anyone think it's fucking weird first of all all the guards look exactly the same so they're all Charlie Adler <laughs> they're all <laughs> and Nobody thinks it's weird that Jerrica is attacking people with with fu- fucking firing hologram lasers out of her ears at people. And you know, the important thing to note here is they had the option to instead set this scene up so this was like weapons and equipment OSP, a sneaking mission <laughs> sort of situation, instead of a full-on assault on Secret Service members. They could have disguised themselves. Would it have been better if, uh, I don't know, you needed an exciting action scene during the song, which I, ah, uh, fucking whatever. But uh, Is that how you would describe this, an exciting action scene? Their luck finally runs out as Jerrica attempts to create fucking hologram British soldiers, and Synergy finally fades away. She's with the British, kill her! <laughs> the song ends, and all of that happened. We, we, like, to, we like to play, Kristen, where... <laughs> oh, this, this podcast typically real lighthearted. We like to we like to say, you know, we like to make the distinction, oh, that didn't happen in reality, or it oh, it just happened in Pizzazz's head. She had a fucking uh, mind flash and her eyes rolled back as, as she heard a song in her brain. Or, oh, wouldn't it be funny if that actually happened? Ha ha ha. <laughs> Jokes. It's not funny anymore. <laughs> the guards aren't really too miffed, all things considered, that a girl band is storming the White House, because all they do, all the first thing that happens after the song is over is a guard goes, don't you have any authorization to be here? And he's not even that angry. You sounded way angrier than that guy did. The holograms are all about to be under arrest until Mr. Prez steps in. He just, he fucking puts his hand in front of the, the guy's chest. He's just like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. I'll handle the girl band. 
I can handle the girl band. Let me take the girl band into the Oval Office. <laughs> Why don't you come into the Oval Office? I'm the president, after all. That's where I conduct my business. In the Oval Office. I'm the president. Would you like to see the Lincoln Bedroom? How about the West Wing? Would you like to do a little walk and talk? Jerrica needs to explain to the president why synergy is so important, but she's being too vague. All she does is fucking dance around synergy's purpose, just being like, she's part of Jem's act. She's the most important thing that Jem has going for her. I can't tell you that I'm Jem. You know what I would have done in this situation? Tell the president you're Jem. I would tell the president my dead dad gave me this computer. Hmm, because I, we see later the, the White House scientists are just like, what the fuck is this thing? So... How about they exhume Emmett Benton's fucking grave if they want to know? It's not Jem's problem. <laughs> He's be like, right, you gotta ask my dead dad, but he's dead. So, uh, give <laughs> Good me luck with back. that. Give me my computer back. She should have tried. All of this explanation is not good enough for the president, so we cut back to the Pentagon. So, they leave the Pentagon to go to the White House, to leave the White House to go to the Pentagon, and hey, we're back here. We're just hitting all the fucking high points. Uh, so... Yeah, it turns out their tour got interrupted. Um, and they had to double back on the Pentagon because they're not allowing girl bands into Congress anymore. Oh, of course. So we're back at the Pentagon here. There's a Kimber scientist voiced by Kimber, a Kim Bryantist or something. Yes, along nailed those lines. it. <laughs> there, she's talking with another scientist about how sophisticated synergy is, like we said, and how, wow, this thing couldn't have been built in the United States. Uh, are you sure? They're all scrubbed up and like sterile too. The Washington Marauder is watching from the vents and... Charlie Adler Guard announces the president's arrival along with Jim behind him. Apparently they swayed the president enough for him to be like, at least stop chopping up the computer. The president starts providing his explanation as to why stop chopping up the computer and then <gasps> the lights go out <gasps> and the president's been <gasps> kidnapped. <gasps> the lights come back on and Charlie Adler goes, the Washington Marauder has the president. So this is happening. <laughs> the Washington Marauder said, I'm going to steal the nation's greatest treasure, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And this is what he meant. He is going to kidnap the president. Apparently, he's just that well-loved. The Marauder warns that if anyone tries to follow him, this treasure is history. Thankfully, Jerrica is an Olympic sprinter. All right, wait a minute. Can we, can we, let's take a second here. Mm -hmm. Everybody cal everybody calm down. I can't, but I'll try. <laughs> the Marauder drives off in a truck. And everyone notices Jerrica has fucking Spider-Man herself to the back of the truck. I'm curious, Kristen, did she teleport? Did she... You said she's an Olympic sprinter. That could very well be the case. But how did the Washington Marauder not notice her? It's too busy <laughs> getting handsy with the president. <laughs> Honk honking the president's butt. Well, that's the end of segment two. Jerrica is fucking stuck to the back of this truck to save the president. And f uh, for God knows what reason. The episode's almost over. Let's continue. <laughs> Segment three starts. The Marauder breaks through a gate and is laughing. Charlie Adler, Secret Service man, relays that the president has been kidnapped to let the kids know who came in maybe from, you know, did they missed segment two because they had to go get the Fritos or whatever. See, I was going to say some type of cereal, but you went with a corn chip. <laughs> I was going to go with cereal too, but my mind went to Fritos. Now I'm thinking of Fritos in a bowl covered in milk. Delicious. <laughs> Just like mom used to make. Kimber laments that they don't have Synergy to help them out, so all of the holograms run back in to start putting Synergy back together, and it takes them a very long time to notice that the holograms have went to go put Synergy back together. Yeah, they just let the girls do their things. To be fair, Synergy appears to be three very large pieces and about <laughs> five very small pieces. <laughs> and yet, fucking give Kimber a set of Legos or something so she can learn to put shit together. Jesus. <laughs> She just doesn't have that kind of, like, spatial reasoning ability. She just sees more than three things and is just like, I'm bored. You would think Aja would help a little bit in this situation. But she knows cars, Kristen, not computer. Poor mute Aja. Yeah, she doesn't say anything in this episode either. What the fuck? The president asks the Marauder why he's being kidnapped, but the Marauder sees this more as adding to a collection than kidnapping. We're still kidnapping, you dumbass. I didn't kill him. I just retired him early. From life. <laughs> the president notices Jerrica while looking in the side mirror and loses his train of thought in the middle of just being like, Marauder, you're a madman. You're a crazy person. You're a... Uh, what's that fucking woman doing on the... I mean... Yeah, the Marauder is like, um, excuse me, do you see a blonde lady on the back of my truck? And the president's like, nope. She certainly doesn't have a shoulder pads, d d jacket, suit, 
The president has some stupid line like, you underestimate the resources of this nation. Primarily, it's rock resources. <laughs> <laughs> it's lady manager resources. Hashtag feminism. Jerrica says that synergy is her only hope, which means that she went into this fucking plan half-cocked immediately. She just, just like, her body naturally moved. Her body knew that she had to save the president, just like any other good American's body would do. Kristen, she's a reverse Manchurian candidate. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, Jem just got a lot more interesting. <laughs> All they need to do is say the words "president kidnapped" and Jem's body starts fucking. She's just like, must save the president. Beep boop boop pop pop. I've never seen the Manchurian candidate. <laughs> The holograms are having a tough time putting Synergy back together, of course. And Kimber goes, Jerrica, why did you have to be so brave? Why did my sister have to be a reverse Manchurian candidate? <laughs> and then Kimber's like, I'm really surprised I got that reference. Where did that come from? What year did that come out? The remake Manchurian candidate was like fucking before Kimber's time, probably. Oof. Well, Good I mean, pull, okay. Kimber. In relative, if we're speaking as 2017 Kimber. <laughs> Because that was what the Denzel Washington one came out in like 2004, maybe? Oh, dude, I don't know. We have run this well dry as far as I am concerned. (laughs) I think the original one had Frank Sinatra in it, maybe? What? Maybe. All right. Now I gotta check on the Manchurian Candidate. That sounds crazy. All right. Here we go. Manchurian Candidate. Uh, 1962, 2004. Okay, good. I got that one. Uh, The 60s uh, is definitely before Kimber's time. No, yeah. That's way before. Let me see. Who was in it? Frank Sinatra is in this Manchurian Candidate! What? <laughs> Why? I gotta watch this fucking movie! I do too! We're back in the truck. The Marauder goes off-road and some trees are poorly animated out of the way. They literally fucking slide the frame so Whoop. the trees open. Just get that out of there. We don't need that right here. <laughs> to drive the truck to the Marauder's secret driveway, which leads to a secret museum that makes the Smithsonian look like a garage sale. So... He has this big pit that's like where Weird Al lived in the Weird Al show. <laughs> and somehow no one knows that it exists. Kristen, why is this guy in Gem? Why is this Batman villain in Gem? It becomes a pattern, to be fair. <laughs> we get weirder shit after this. The museum is 200 feet underground, so nobody will find the president now. And here is where, yes, the president says, you underestimate our nation's resources. Rock and roll. Feminism. Both of them put together. <gasps> Rock and roll feminism. <laughs> rock, 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 rock and roll feminism. Basically the best way I think we've ever attempted to describe what they were going for with Jerrica's character. <laughs> and hey, I said attempted. They didn't nail it. Jerrica is still calling out to Synergy as the Marauder leads the president through the museum, which has things like the Betsy Ross flag, the Liberty Bell. You'd think fucking somebody would be like, oh, he stole the flag. Fucking Liberty Bell, we gotta catch this guy. Why is he the Washington Marauder if he clearly has two things from Philadelphia? <laughs> and Moon Rocks. He's got some, why isn't he the Moon Marauder? <laughs> the Washington Philadelphia Moon Marauder just didn't have the same ring to it. The Moon Marauder. <laughs> no! That's the worst <laughs> thing I've ever heard. The president is put in a jail cell that is a replica of the Oval Office, but it doesn't look like one at all. For a split second, in- the president seems convinced that the Marauder has also stolen the Oval Office. <laughs> And he needs to clarify that it's a replica. This president's a dumbass. We don't learn the president's name. No, Uh, his name is the president. His name is the (laughs) president. T. President. Our nation's greatest president. My parents knew where I was going in in my life. One thing I wanted to note, Kristen, Trick or Tech Rat, we said, was October 30th it aired. Uh So, on October 30th, 1987, which means that this episode aired... On November the 6th, probably. I didn't check, actually, but uh, that's usually, what, November 7th-ish is usually election day, right? Oh, Jesus. And 1987 means that this would have been the election between George H.W. Bush and I don't know who the Democratic candidate was. (laughs) History doesn't quite remember the losers. (laughs) Nope. This is... Is weird. I feel weird about the cultural relevance of this episode now. (laughs) So, I don't know if the president was supposed to be modeled on George H.W. Bush, because he certainly isn't Ronald Reagan. (laughs) No, definitely not. So, Jerrica is sneaking around at this point. She is a bad sneak. She's she's a bad sneaking around here, only to be caught by two very American zippers. I didn't remember this part at all. And the fact that this guy had two American zipper lackeys was, like, the most mind-blowing thing in the entire universe to me. 
Like, what the fuck is the point? He's a fucking Batman villain. He's got people dressed like him that are all muscle-bound and shit to do his dirty work. Never mentioned on this podcast, um, in this Team Star Kid production, Holy Musical Batman, uh, they explained that all Batman villains are just, um, a guy in a suit with a thing on his head. <laughs> Well, this guy's got a, a nice powdered wig and a hat, so that would be correct. Mm-hmm, yeah. Also, one of the zippers is Charlie Adler, which is par for the Charlie Adler course. Of course. Jerrica says, the president is not for display! And also we get another weird... So, okay, so Jerrica... Samantha Newark doesn't say Vuri in this episode, but she does call the Marauder the Marada. Where are you from, Samantha Newark? <laughs> the Marauder orders Jerrica be added to the contemporary collection. Which, is he going to display a businesswoman, or does he think that he's displaying Jem? She's from Tennessee. Samantha Newark is? Yeah. I thought she was English. She's from Nashville. Huh. That doesn't make sense. She's a lot of gem stuff on her website. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if that surprises you. I don't want to make it seem like I'm saying mean things about Samantha Newark. She's also, like, a musician. So the fact that they had someone else do the vocals in gem is a little... I mean, we, 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 we heard it a few times with... Uh, in the fan with the tell me I'm crazy. Tell, tell me, me I'm crazy. <laughs> tell me I'm lazy. Tell me I'm lazy. <laughs> Jerrica slips away and grabs Paul Revere's chalice, which I wrote in my notes. It's priceless before he says it, because of course he's going to fucking say it. <laughs> of course. Uh, Paul Revere, of course, famous for his chalice. <laughs> I guess they couldn't have his horse. <laughs> those are the bones of Paul Revere's horse. <laughs> it was so hard to get those. <laughs> The president manages to slip out of his ropes, and the marauder runs at Jerrica. The president grabs Lincoln's cane and looks like he's about to fucking go to town on some dudes. He looks like he's about to, like... I guess they couldn't have Lincoln's depression. <laughs> they couldn't have Lincoln's fucking seven-foot-four carcass. That would have been inappropriate, Joe. That's not funny. <laughs> so, yeah, the president looks like he's gonna fucking square up, but no. They just kind of end up... They're, pers- like, threatening them with breaking American artifacts. They're just basically pursued by the American zippers, and we're cut to, again, Synergy is almost finished before finally fucking CIA- We put together the three big parts, but what do we do with these last two small parts? A CIA dude runs in and he goes, hey, that's government property you're tampering with. Get out of here, girl band. And they're like, okay. So they all kind of have a little whisper before they leave of just like, I don't know where these last pieces go. Put them anywhere. Just shove them into holes even if they don't fit. So the girls are shoot out. And again, I don't know how it took this long where they got nearly finished with synergy before somebody was like, where'd the girl band go? They were preoccupied with the president's kidnapping, I suppose. So they all leave and just kind of put in the rest of the parts randomly, which of course they put them in all correctly, but we're back with all the president's men where it does end up with a weird glitch in synergy though that when the computer turns back on she's wearing a sombrero <laughs> which is strange so we're back with all the president's men he and jerrica are cornered jerrica calls for synergy again and finally synergy is online jesus christ finally she could start fucking making holograms so here we go Jer- <laughs> does synergy have a mind of her own making these holograms or is jerrica is jerrica doing this dumb bullshit synergy woke up and much like me she is pissed <laughs> Synergy starts making holograms, and we get, <gasps> George Washington, it can't be! Uh, and Lincoln's there. That's a little bit more plausible. <laughs> and Teddy Roosevelt. Yep. <laughs> Not the wheelchair president, weirdly <laughs> enough. Didn't summon that guy. Oh, they went with everyone on Mount Rushmore, Kristen, other than Thomas Jefferson, I guess. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Teddy Roosevelt all basically say, "Let my, when Moses came to Egypt land, let my people go. And Teddy Roosevelt spits out some locusts. It's pretty <laughs> sick. <laughs> And they all just kind of bum rush him. And the marauder and the goons, this is pretty stupid. This is a stupid thing that happens here. Where what? The marauder and... Tell me one stupid thing that happens. The marauder and the goons lock themselves in the cell meant for the president. And the marauder even goes, here, take the keys! And throws them out of the cell. By your command, previous presidents, we will starve here. <laughs> Once again, the Union is preserved, says Abe Lincoln as he fucking floats away into space. This is how much Asian television I've been watching recently. I thought your note said, thanks, Abe. (laughs) Cameraman Abe from Game Center CX, the best character. (laughs) The holograms disappear and they lock the Marauder and his goons in the cell. I guess that's why they needed the keys. The Marauder actually didn't lock himself in yet. So uh, it's Jem that decides that they're going to starve down there. (laughs) The president is curious as to what the fuck happened, and Jerrica explains as they leave. So, Kristen, we cut to the president and Jerrica are driving out in the truck. The president's driving the kidnap truck. (laughs) And for some reason, 
Jerrica is the one who puts... Okay, so I always frame this as the president finds out Jem is Jerrica, when in reality it's more Jerrica tells the president she's Jem. She has no qualms about it this time and doesn't think to even confirm with him. Like, you're not going to tell anyone, right? She's surprised when he doesn't later. She's just like, well, I don't want to be Jem anymore. She puts forth that information to the president. She just goes, even Jem is a hologram. I don't know why she says that. She, She doesn't have to. No, she doesn't. So she showtime synergies for the president and lets him know that other than the holograms and her sister Kimber, which again, Jericho's <laughs> sister, yeah, well, even though, hey, well, whatever. Uh, uh-huh. Mr. President, you're the only one that knows that I'm Jim. I'm sitting here wondering why they didn't tell Mrs. Bailey. That's a good question. She's a responsible adult they conceivably trust. Or do they? <gasps> Thrill seeker. You know Mrs. Bailey would have gotten off on telling people that Jerrica is Jem, Kristen. Oh, yeah. That fucking danger rat. All because she started with putting some flower pots on a weird part of the roof that an orphan would later try to commit suicide off of. (laughs) Damn it, Mrs. Bailey. Damn it. She just won't be satisfied now. Really, when it all comes down to it, I don't think the fucking president cares that Jerrica is Jem. So... We cut to a press conference here where an exasperated reporter, probably asking for, like, the third time just so he could be like, wait a minute, okay, so fucking just wait. You just got kidnapped and now you're doing a press conference? (laughs) Fucking tell me one more time. Jerrica Benton is the one responsible for the rescue of the president of the fucking United States. And No one from the Secret Service followed that truck? None of them? The president is just like, yep, but, and when he says but... Jerrica's just like, oh no, I had a hand in it too. <laughs> I'm the president. <laughs> George H.W. Bush. You card. Known for his sense of humor. And then Jerrica says in the fucking flattest tone possible, thank you, Mr. President, for keeping my secret. It's the worst. I want it as a ringtone. Oh, but there's still a concert tonight. We have... Ah! <laughs> God! We're on stage and Jem goes, this song is dedicated to our country and all for which it stands. Song number three of the evening. Freedom! Freedom! Yeah, I think that's already a song. Freedom! 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 I'm doing the fucking Aretha Franklin song from the Blues Brothers. I know you are. (laughs) You did very good, too. Song number three of the evening, Freedom, which we'll play for you right now. noticed about all of the american imagery in this what is that Kristen? like the first thing they show is the twin towers really i thought the first thing they showed was the uoji memorial i definitely saw some twin towers in there mm. and i went Ooh. Mm. i wonder if they got edited on the dvds huh no they usually don't do that that'd be weird i don't know i thought i saw the uoji memorial first i don't know so. what that looks like that's the one of the people fucking the the soldiers putting up the flag oh that okay yeah yeah that there was that too still all of it we got the lincoln memorial there's national landmarks maybe i missed it when they were doing like the fucking four by four of national landmarks and one of them is the the fucking st louis arch and probably <laughs> for some reason i was about to say big ben <laughs> Um, no. Not quite, no. So, Jem ends up with a chorus for some reason. We got baseball, parades, birthdays. Party in the USA. Wheat, surfing, a typewriter. You know. Airplane, oil drilling. That's the most American thing. Hollywood walkway. Great. (laughs) Zing. Boom. The Washington Monument and the moon. You know. America on the moon. We go over some landmarks a few more times because we ran out of footage. Kristen, Freedom is a pretty bad song. It's 
It's not the worst song in this episode. It's not the worst song in this episode, but it's, I mean, it's it's a normal America song, I guess. You can, it's not... Fireworks, fireworks everywhere! It's not cheesy enough to be a Hulk Hogan theme, however. I wouldn't know. Maybe that's the problem, is they're playing... Then again, fucking Rick Derringer's I Am A Real American could have been played completely straight in the 80s, and I think it was, actually. People were on board with that shit until about 1990 when people were like, I don't want to see Hulk Hogan's fucking orange-ass face anymore. You're isolating me with all these Hulk Hogan references. I hope you know that, and I hope you feel bad about it. We got some bells ringing at the end of the song, and fireworks, fireworks everywhere! (laughs) So the president just straight up lets himself into Jem's dressing room. I guess he has a skeleton key of the Kennedy Center. <laughs> we smash cut, yes, to the president walking into Jem's, just walking into Jem's room. I think she, I think he knocks first, I think. <laughs> I would hope so, Mr. President. He thanks Jem for the concert and wants to ask Jerrica if she'd accept the Presidential Medal of Honor! I'm sorry, are you upset, uh, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Is something wrong? It's pretty egregious, Kristen. Oh, I know. We, we've talked about things, Kristen, where there's an ex, there, this <laughs> series is grounded in reality at times. Yep. Jem winning the Indy 500 is one of those things where I'm just like, I don't think I could get on board with this. Jerrica being offered the Presidential Medal of Honor is something that I definitely cannot be fucking on board with. Yeah, I feel like she actually should have gotten in trouble for <laughs> following the president when he was kidnapped, but what the fuck do I know? And what the fuck does Beth Borenstein know? I'm sorry, Beth Borenstein. I'm sure you're a lovely person. <laughs> I know. I feel bad because I, I shit on Beth Bornstein at the end of my notes here too. And I, I Beth Bornstein, you're a fine writer. You wrote the fan. It's it's my favorite episode. But Jesus Christ, it's a cartoon from the '80s. I know we can probably not judge you now. Jerrica basically says, "I don't want the Presidential Medal of Honor. Please give it to Synergy. She deserves the credit." And the president's just like, "We can't give it to a computer, but I promise that and next time Synergy's in DC, <laughs> we'll treat her with a little more respect." So then, explain what happens next. Synergy appears in the room and goes, that's the best news I've heard all week. And then they all hug. What does that mean? (laughs) What? Get me off this goddamn episode, please. We're jumping off. That's it. So that was the presidential dilemma. Jesus Christ. What the fuck, Beth Bornstein? I know. I I don't want to. I don't want to continue pummeling Beth Bornstein here, but it's I whatever. That was the Kristen. What did you think of the presidential dilemma? What did I think of the presidential dilemma? I think it has helped me notice a trend. Where is the more exasperated I get, the higher my voice goes. I think that's something I do too. (laughs) I think that's a natural thing for a lot of people. Let me let me. Here's what the episode boils down to. Jerrica was offered a presidential medal of honor. Jim and the holograms in a few episodes travel through time. Travel. Travel. Travel through time. Travel through space and fucking time. And I think that's a little more believable. We only have a problem with one of those things. I guess which one? It's garbage. All around, fucking put it on a... We don't don't rate episodes in terms of number, but put this on a fucking two, maybe? This episode is garbage. Sorry, Beth Bornstein. Now's the point in the evening where we will list off all the fun contact things where you could find us. You could follow us on the Twitter machine at CWTAPod. You could follow me at Octopus. That's A W K T A U P U S. You can follow me at Funny Girl TM, like trademark. You can find us on the iTunes, on the SoundCloud, on the Stitcher Radio, on the YouTube. Leave a rating, give a review, do whatever the fuck. All of that shit. I don't even want to read it correctly anymore. You don't want to. Joe and I both had full work days the day we're recording. We don't have the patience for this. You can also reach us, cwtapod at gmail.com. You can tell us if you are a real American, fight for the rights of every man, or what would complete your collection if you were the Washington Marada. Next week, Kristen, Rock and Roll Express, which is about taking a train. So look forward to that. Ashley's in it. I don't know anything else about the episode. You watched this episode more recently than I have. More recently as in like literally over a year ago? <laughs> more recently as in I, I have not seen this episode twice. They're okay. Fair enough. Ashley's in this episode and Rio is a shitbag. That's all I remember. So for the Can We Talk About podcast, my name is Joe. I am Kristen. And join us next week for Train. Cool. And she's back in the atmosphere. No! <laughs> Felt so wrong. Drops of Jupiter in the mail. Please no.